Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Saturday, July 29th, 2017, and we're looking at Flat Earth again. I've been discussing the star rotation with a Flat Earther on Facebook, and um, some of you would have previously seen my star rotation visualization video that I did using a lampshade, a spherical lampshade, showing the problem with star rotation. This is another view of the same thing using Starry Night as a simulation. Now what we're looking at here is the Northern Hemisphere with Polaris, the Northern Pole Star at the center of the screen. You can see I've also got Ursa Minor, or the Little Dipper, selected. I've got the North Celestial Pole selected in red, and I've got Polaris, the Northern Pole Star, selected in yellow. You can see the moon over there, the sun down here, I've got daylight hidden, which is why it's black with the sun there. Now I've got time sped up, so I want to run this forward, and we can see the rotation of the stars around the sky. And we can see that the rotation is counterclockwise, as seen from the northern hemisphere. Now this is indeed the view that people have from the northern hemisphere when they look north. It's also the same view that I have looking towards the north from the southern hemisphere in that the stars rotate in this direction from east to west across my northern sky. Now I can't see Polaris because it's below the horizon, which of course it shouldn't be if the Earth is flat. Polaris should never be below the horizon, but in fact Polaris is 37 degrees below my northern horizon. Now how do I know that it's 37 degrees below my northern horizon? Well apart from the fact that I'm at 37 degrees south, I can also use other stars and constellations, such as Orion for example, to actually project the position of where Polaris would be below the horizon. Because I can me measure the angular distance between stars to project that line down to the northern horizon. But anyway, let's just pause this for a minute, and I'm going to turn on the horizon as seen from my location. So here is my horizon, I'll just zoom in. We're looking due north, and you can see from the grid that the North Celestial Pole is actually well below my northern horizon. And let me just turn on the horizon line now before we go back to the view that we were looking at in before. So let me just pan around before we do that. Now we're looking west. And now we're looking south. And there is the South Celestial Pole up there. Okay. So this is a view around my sky as seen from 37 degrees south, or in the southern hemisphere. This grid represents the celestial sphere. So that's the south celestial pole, as we pan around. The north celestial pole is down below here. So I'm going to turn off the horizon again, which will give us a transparent view, sort of below the Earth, as if I could look below the Earth, down through the ground, towards where Polaris should be. So here we go, turning off the horizon. And you can see that I've left this horizon line selected. So that gives us an artificial horizon. I can now pan around, and that white horizontal line represents where my, my physical horizon would be if I had the horizon turned on. So here we are, looking due north again. And there is Ursa Minor, or the Little Dipper. And there is Polaris again. So let me run this forward again as, as I was before. You now the time is sped up, of course, as you can see up there. And we've got that counterclockwise rotation. But as I pan around towards the south, then we see that the rotation is opposite. Now, here I'm looking due west. Okay, so this is where the the sun sets on the equinox, and uh, you can see that if I was doing a time-lapse star trail image, then the, the star lines would actually be straight at a 
about this point here, looking due west. As I pan round even more to the south, now here is the problem. The star rotation is now clockwise. And you can see I've got Crux, or the Southern Cross, selected there. I can go out and film the Southern Cross rotating clockwise around my southern sky. According to the flat earth model, the dome or the firmament of stars rotates in one direction, and that is counterclockwise. And there should be only one point of rotation, which would be around the northern celestial pole here. And that would be counterclockwise, as we see here. But in fact, there is not one, but two points of rotation around the North Celestial Pole and around the South Celestial Pole. Now remember that this is my horizon line. Okay, So let me back out, and this is where it gets really interesting. Because we can't see the two points of rotation on the Earth that we live on, but I can simulate it here using the software to some extent. So here is the North Celestial Pole down the bottom here with the stars rotating around counterclockwise and here is the South Celestial Pole with the stars rota rotating around clockwise. Now how can this possibly work on a flat Earth? This model is impossible on a flat Earth. This sort of rotation that we're seeing is only possible on a globe Earth, where you've got a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere. It is impossible on the flat Earth model. It just cannot be done. This proves that the Earth is a sphere. How can there possibly be two points of rotation opposite to each other, unless the Earth is a sphere? That can be the only explanation this cannot possibly work if there is one dome of stars on the firmament rotating counterclockwise above a flat Earth. This model here is for a globe or sphere Earth. It is not for a flat Earth. Yet what we see here would work above a flat Earth but then when we go down to the Southern Hemisphere, then we've got problems because we've actually got two points of rotation, as we see here. Remember, there's the horizon line. If you haven't seen my other video where I use a hollow lampshade to demonstrate this uh, using a camera instead of simulation software, please check that out. I'll put a link in the description area. Sometimes people criticize using simulations, saying, well, it's a computer simulation, it's not the real thing. Well, in the video, I use the real thing. I use a lampshade, and I film it from inside using a camera. So it's a physical demonstration of, of what I'm talking about here. Thank you for visiting my channel. Please be sure to subscribe. For further discussion, please check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area below. If you'd like to support my work, you'll find a PayPal button on the About tab of my channel. Your support will be most appreciated. Thank you for watching.